Well, hey everybody, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm your host. I am your nutty professor. I am your your conglomeration of idiots. Number one, <laughs> I'm Crystal. If you guys haven't, uh, if you've never heard this show before, I, I do this every week. It's live, obviously, recorded on Facebook, and then we take it from Facebook and we take the audio and put it so many different places. So uh, wherever you're listening to this from, welcome. And I call this week's episode, You Are Not Alone. In And I wanted to, and I will, tell my story of how consciousness completely and totally saved my life. This show got inspired by an invitation that Access Consciousness is actually putting out all over the world called You Are Not Alone. And it's in um, celebration of, in honor of World Suicide Awareness Day. We've turned it into World Suicide Awareness Two Months because why just do a day when you could do a couple of months? And a lot of us, all the people that I know have been totally transformed by Access Consciousness and the bars. And I really wanted to tell you my story because um, it's really, really, really easy to look at somebody online or listen to them on SoundCloud or somewhere, you know, Spotify even, and not get where they've come from. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about that. Um, I call this You Are Not Alone because you're not. And I spent, hi Mara, hi Loretta. I spent most of my life not only thinking I was alone, but feeling incredibly alone. And so I am, as of the filming of this video, I'm 45 years old. I found Access Consciousness about seven or eight years ago. And it was very, very fluky how I found it. And two years before I found Access, I was incredibly suicidal. So I'll tell you that, I'll tell you what happened. So I had been married once before and I was married again. And I, in the second marriage, just like could not seem to get my shit together. It was like everybody around me was happy, seemed to be able to be happy with all the normal stuff, you know, like a normal life, normal income. I was uh, working as a waitress. I had gotten recertified as a landscape designer. Like I had a good husband. I had a good life. We had a good house. Everything was good. And yet I was constantly like depressed and sad, like all the time. And I created lots of problems and drama in my marriage. And so we were like always fighting about something. And I remember my husband very, like, because he said it a lot. I remember him saying like, I don't know what to do to make you happy. And, and this went on for probably two and a half years. And then I tried leaving him in a, you know, trying to create a solution there. Uh, that didn't really do the thing, so we got back together. But about somewhere in there, somewhere right in the middle, I got so fucking down and depressed and so done that um, it was a Sunday morning. We had just come back from church. We were going to church. We had like we had good people around us. Everything seemed like it should be good, except inside of me, I was like dying. And it was after we had come back from church and my husband and his buddy were like napping in the living room. I walked outside the house and I don't know what happened or what broke inside of me, but I walked outside the house and I saw this shrub <laughs> in full bloom. And whatever that was, I just like literally crumpled to the ground and started sobbing like in the front of our house. And I was crying and crying and crying. And I just remember it so much because I was so desperate. I so didn't know what to do to help myself. And I had tried everything. I had tried everything that I knew. I, you know, done church. I'd done Bible school. I had done EMDR. I had been in counseling my whole life. I'd done psychotherapy, psychology, like... Uh, I had a psychiatrist, I'd been in, I went gone to AA meetings, I wasn't even an alcoholic, like I had done everything. And um, I just, I just crumpled and I had recently discovered that you could drink enough that you would black out. So I'm laying, literally laying there on the front lawn sobbing, feeling more alone than I've ever felt in my life. And it occurred to, and I just wanted out and I was like, oh, I could actually get a bottle of alcohol, take it with me into the bathtub, black out and drown. During this whole time, I'm just sobbing my face off. 
and there and I was literally like planning it. I was looking, you know, I was remember thinking where the liquor was and how I would go upstairs and how everybody would be sleeping and no one would actually know I was gone. And then as I was going into the future, thinking about my dead body, the thing that stopped me was the thought of my waterlogged dead body, them, those guys trying to get that body down the stairs. And it was a very narrow set of stairs. It was a very old house. And there was something about that that I laugh about now, that was pretty morbid then, that just stopped me from going upstairs and doing it. And the moment after that, I remember just a silent like cry from my heart of what else is possible. And I didn't have those words. I didn't know that was even a question you could ask, but I was like, what else? You know, it was just this like silent, like pull to the universe. Not even two days later, a new friend of ours called me, I think, or Mark, I don't remember. And I had, she'd heard that I'd been struggling and she offered me her appointment with this lady that she'd been seeing not that far away from me. And now this wasn't access at the time, but when I look at that pivotal moment where, you know, I was almost like out of here, off the planet, I know that was a piece of me getting to access. So she gave me her appointment because this lady was booked. And I started seeing her. And in the beginning, I had to see her three times a week, literally. I was down there like almost, it felt like I was lived at her office rather than at my house. I was there so much. And she was, you know, adjusting my diet and she was doing this thing with me called bioenergetic intolerance elimination and it was it was working a bit i was starting to feel a little better i wasn't so suicidal i wasn't so emotionally like all over the place and um but i had to keep seeing her to keep that effect because i would literally go see her and i'd feel better and then i'd go home and then i don't know something would happen and i'd be back in the shit again and then i'd go see her again i'd feel better and go home and be back in the shit go see her so that was sort of our uh you know routine so I spent a ton of money on her. I don't even know what it was. And at the time, it was like, it was, it was the gift I needed. And then we went on like that for a while. And then my husband and my husband really, really, really wanted to move. And he wanted to move away from like up into small townville, Ontario. And we, at the time we were living in Mississauga and in Mississauga is huge. So there's like lots of job opportunities and my Ashna was there who was taking care of me physically and everything for me was there, but he wanted to leave. And I really wanted to make the marriage work. So I said, okay. So we moved up there and very long story short, it was very unsuccessful for me. I, um, and when I look at it now, I know that I was going against what I knew would work for me, but I wanted to support him and that's what we do. So I'm up in the small town and I'm having to work three jobs just to make ends meet. Um, low paying, three little low paying jobs. And he's thriving and I'm again feeling so alone, more alone than I've ever felt. I'm far away from my support system and working in a job where I work by myself. It was like so much aloneness. And um, again, there was this just ache in my whatever my being that was like, what else is possible? Like, what is it gonna take? You know, there's just gotta be a way to be happy without seeing a professional three times a week. And I'm not even kidding you, like a day or two later, I stumbled into an old friend from Bible school. That's another video. Um, who I adore and who I'd always really vibed with. And she had access consciousness, two words, listed at the top of her Facebook profile as her employer. And I was like, it was enough of a tweak that I clicked, of course, I clicked on it. I'm like, what is this? Like, I want, what, what are you doing? So I clicked on it. And of course, I, I had no idea what I was looking at. And if you guys have ever, if you guys remember your first encounter with Access Consciousness, I, I've heard a lot of people say they had no idea what they were looking at. Um, but, but I, so I, you know, I like probably, toured through the Facebook page and then I went to the website and I literally was so confused. And my question was like, where do you even start with this stuff? Like, is it a school? Is it a, is it a pathway? Is there like a, and of course, Access gives you no clues as to where you want to start. They're just like, hey, where do you, what do you want to choose? Excuse me. And I'm like, choose, just tell me, tell me what to do. So I, I literally, I, for like two weeks, I kept Googling it and, and, and finding different websites and finding different YouTube videos. It was all over the map. 
And I finally found uh, the website of a facilitator in London, Ontario, which weirdly enough is where I'm living now. I've come full circle. And I emailed them and I was like, can you, can you tell me what the help, like, where do I start? And they were the first ones to say, well, you can really start wherever, but you could also just start the session or a bars class. Now, bars is 32 points on your head. They're bars of energy that actually run through your head. And when somebody lightly touches them, you either feel like you had a great day at the spa or your whole life changes. Literally, there's no middle ground there. And I wasn't a bodywork person. Like I, I didn't even really like people touching me that much. I, I never really had gone for a lot of bodywork. But this access thing like would not get out of my system. And I was like, well, if bars are the way to start and there is somebody there, then fine. You know, I mean, I, that's really how it was for me. So she's like, well, which one's lighter for you, a session or a class? Now, for those of you guys that don't know, if you're watching this for the first time, what's true for you is light and spacious and gives you a sense of possibility. What's not true for you like lands with a thud, like it's just heavy as, as fuck. But I had no idea what she meant by that. And she briefly kind of sort of described the tool. And what she was attempting to do was empower me to choose what was really gonna work for me. So she's like, which one's lighter for you, a session or a class? Well, listen, I didn't know how to use the tool. So I literally, I held them both out here, physically in my hands. And I was like, session, class, session, class, session. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't tell the difference. And so I ended up choosing to get a bars session. Now. She lived about two and a half hours outside of where I was living at the time. And so I was living up in Goderich, so I drove down to London for the session. And I have, I have never yet even since had a session like that. It was so game changing for me. And I'm so grateful to this day for that session and for that choice. Like, I'm so grateful. Um, so I walked in and she was very, she was light and bright as a person and I laid down on a massage table, which is what you do when you get your bars run, clothes on, you know, and she sat at my head and she just lightly touched it in all these different places. And Gary Douglas, who's the creator of Access Consciousness, tells us as facilitators all the time, he's like, just run people's bars. Like, don't try to use the verbal tools or get all fancy or like ask them what they want to get out of the session or any of that. Just run their bars. It's enough. But I am so fucking grateful that my facilitator did not do that. <laughs> she, because I had so many questions about so many things because there's nothing in my life was working. Money was hard, my relationship was hard. I was like unhappy all the time. So she ran my bars and she also processed me with the verbal tools through the whole hour and a half that she was doing it. It was mind blowing. It was mind blowing. And I got off that massage table and I was literally like 10,000 pounds lighter. I was like 10,000. I didn't even know you could be that light. I didn't even know I was that heavy. <laughs> and so my friend had driven me to the session. And I, so I hugged my facilitator, walked out to the car, got in the, got in the car, looked over at my friend and she was looked at me and she was like, well, how was it? And I was like, it like I had no words I couldn't describe it and the and like the only thing I could express energetically was like holy fuck and the thing that stuck with me after that because that was that day and I felt like that all day but we had also changed some things like we had cleared out some stuff from relationship and happiness and I don't even remember now and what I really what really struck me in between that session and the next session I ended up getting is that the stuff that we changed was just gone. Like it stayed different. I didn't go back home and like feel worse. I didn't go back home and like have the same things come up. It was just everything was easier. And the stuff that I had been dealing with before was just not there. Now it wasn't like everything was gone, but it was noticeable. So I think I had like three or four more sessions before I actually chose a bars class because I didn't have any interest in doing the bars on people, <laughs> which, which if you know me now is like hilarious because even today I'm going to my friend AC's house and we're going to do three hour bars on each other. Now it's like an integral part of my life, but I wasn't going to do that then. I'm not a bodywork person. 
But the bars was the doorway to the foundation class. And foundation was this four day class where you got to learn and experience the verbal tools, I thought. So that's what I wanted. And to get to foundation, you had to take bars. So I was like, oh, all right, I'll muddle through this one day class. Well, so <laughs> anyway, so I signed up for bars. And if you guys, I'm, I'm actually using Facebook ads to boost this to my people locally here in London, Ontario. So if you guys are watching this, I actually teach that class now. It's phenomenal. Accessconsciousness.com slash Crystal Crawford and you can find a class. You can also find a, a four free clinics that I'm putting on here in London um, and people all over the world that are doing these for the next two months so you can come taste the bars. But anyway, so I signed up for this one day class and it was epic. A bars class is you get to run bars on people twice and get your bars run twice. And it's like so relaxing and so game changing and you come away with this tool that you can use on other people if you want to and make money with it if you want to and whatever. <laughs> so, oh, thank you so much. So I took that class and then my plan was to take, and, and the thing, here's the thing guys, is I kept getting happier and lighter. Now you gotta understand that I was 38 at the time and I had spent the last what felt like 38 billion years, really heavy and really sad. I actually, if, if you go back and you read my journals from that period of time pre-access, I described myself as a sad person. I'm just a sad person. I was sad all the time about something. And nobody now can even picture that because most of the time I'm like laughing and making fun and having a good time. But um, uh, I'm so distracted, you guys are so amazing. Um, yeah, I was a sad person. So to keep getting happier and for that to start being available to me was like, was a miracle. <sighs> okay, so I took that one day bars class and the target was to get to foundation. Well, after that, I found out what foundation costs and foundation at the time was a $1,400 access class. And it was more money than I'd ever spent on anything except for maybe my car. And even then I'd had help. So I put it off for like three months and a couple of foundation classes passed and I kept watching them go by and like, oh, I really want to take that. Oh, I really want to take that. And finally, there was one coming up that was, um, uh, I don't even know, like the night, it was the next night, like I'd put off registering for it. I wanted to, wanted to, wasn't to, didn't register. And the night before, I'm sitting at my desk at work and um, I'm so grateful for the way the universe works. Sitting in my, and, and so I'm on this random, I think I'm in my Gmail account. And did you know Gmail has a chat function? I didn't either. Neither did the person who ended up chatting to me on that chat function. <laughs> and so right there on this random chat channel, um, the facilitator like popped up and she's like, hi. And I was like, hey, I said, you have a class tomorrow. And um, she goes, yeah. She's like, you coming? And I was like, Oh God, what would it take? And I was like, I didn't, I had, I had actually just left my husband. Um, I was working, I was living on my own. I was trying to get myself established. I, I was making, I had a fixed income and I was like, oh, I really want to, but money. And she's like, okay, cool. Well, what would it take? And she didn't get significant about it. And she didn't like push anything on me. And so I was like, yeah, what would it take? Well, I didn't really know a lot about the tools of access. I didn't know that choice creates, but I did know that after we got off that chat, I fucking could not get that class out of my system. And I had $1,400 left on my credit card. And I looked at that and I looked at the class and I was like, this may be the stupidest thing I ever do, but fuck it, I'm doing it. And, um, oh, I didn't realize I was gonna be so grateful telling this story. So I, put that class on my credit card. I called my friend in London and I got a place to stay within like two hours. And I drove down to London and that four day class changed the trajectory of my whole life. <laughs> oh. And um, if I can get through the tears of gratitude here, I'll tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> uh, because because of so many things. I did not know that consciousness opens the doors to all healing. 
I didn't know that I wasn't actually fucked up. I was a gift. <laughs> I didn't know that. I just thought all these things about me were just wrong. You know, that aloneness that I had felt my whole life. Um, I didn't know that there were actually other beings around that were with me. And there were so many just, there were so many conversations that happened in Foundation that gave me access to the acknowledgement of how different I was instead of the belief that I was that I was just built badly. And it was like moment after moment after moment after moment in that first four day class where I, um, I, you know, I got lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter as they, as we had these conversations that nobody else had ever had with me in my entire life. And, uh, and then, and then you flip to the back of the manual and I found out you could be a certified facilitator of this stuff. And I went like, what? Like, you're telling me that I can, you know, I can do, I can do these classes and I can empower people to have change at the speed of space. And I can do that for the rest of my life. Like sign me the fuck up. <laughs> and I became a certified facilitator in like eight months. I just like, I ran as fast as I could and got there. And so this video, this show, this, you know, all the classes that I do now, all the change that gets created through my delivery of these tools is a result of, of those choices and everything's different. Like I discovered how to make money work for me. I discovered tools to create a business that I'd never created before. I, I mean, I was able to create this incredible relationship. I've had this this communion with me and everything around me that I never had access to before and and I'm just fucking happy like and I still go through it and you guys will see my videos where I'm like up oh, struggling today but I'm not struggling because I think I'm wrong anymore and I'm not struggling because I think I'm alone I am struggling towards and choosing towards a totally different future that I didn't even know I could have. And I am receiving more of what I actually am. And fuck, I just want to encourage you that if you are watching this and you, this is a new conversation to you, to run, run and get your bars run. Run and find me or somebody near you that, that does bars. Because bars opens the doors to all receiving. It's the first entry point where you and your body get to actually start to get the sense of what receiving even could be. You know, where you start to actually be the kindness for yourself that you always hoped someone else would be. And, um, whew, can't stop the grateful tears today. <laughs> and if you read the comments, there's a lot of really grateful people. Everybody that I know has been totally transformed by consciousness. Um, you are not alone. You are different, but you're not alone. And your difference is not what's wrong about you. It's what's strong about you. And I am living proof of someone who like was certain that I was completely fucked up forever. <laughs> Um, I lived through sexual abuse and emotional abuse and religious abuse and uh, two marriages and adultery and I think the only thing I didn't get into was child prostitution and I don't say that very lightly. <laughs> I do say it pretty lightly, but uh, there isn't anything that you've been through that is impossible for you to come out on the other side and have you from. And I... We just want to invite you to find somebody that can touch your head and run these bars on you to somewhere near you. And if you've taken bars and you haven't taken foundation class yet, I really want to invite you to choose that. I've got two online foundations, one starting next week as, the, as of the recording of this video and one in October. Um, right now with COVID, they're all online. Game changing. Essential. And what else is possible? What do you know? What do you know? How did you get yourself here? And what's next? And what's pulling you? And what do you know? You are so powerful and so amazing and you don't have to believe me right now. You just have to take the next step. 
Whatever that next step is in front of you, take that. Because you got yourself here and you will get yourself to where you're going, no matter how fucked up you feel. But just tie a knot at the end of your rope, get yourself to one of those free clinics around the world, and, um, and what else is possible. And if you're watching this and you want to reach out to me and have a chat about any part of this, I'm totally happy to do that. I know people all over the world too, so if you need to be connected with somebody, I can do that. But... What would it be like if those of us who have felt alone and different our whole lives started to grab onto these tools of consciousness and created the different world that we've always known was possible? What would it be like if those of us that are the kindness and the light bringers of the world actually really started choosing kindness for ourselves and really started creating what we know is possible. Now is the time. I'll see you guys next.